very dear students my audience and largely my master degree students very warm welcome to the uh, dr zia ahmed youtube channel the lecture is being recorded for the benefit of my students today's lecture is on chapter 13 uh, i i think that uh, i i don't need to remind my audience because there has been frequent lectures on uh, the maths uh, on maths mode by mohsen hamid but just uh, for the sake of little reminder i would like to add that Uh, there are significant characters in it like murad badshah the villain of the story and daru partially the protagonist and then it's the villainous activity as well it could be uzi the gentleman and the very thoroughly educated and rich person and uh, then we have mumtaz the most loving character in this novel this chapter is going to provide us a lot of uh, commentary on the characters of other people with the point of view of daru himself he will be speaking and talking to us in such a way that we will be able to know more details about the other characters and also will be able to get many answers to the many questions that this very complex tale has brought before us so let's have a start with the uh, looking at the characters through the angle of daru in this chapter so chapter is here as you can visualize it says that my cocoon is tight and contained by my broken body blood wet flesh combined with glass bonding me to my bandages eyes shut by swelling see only orange translucent light so that is the introduction of the chapter and this introduction is uh, telling us the story of some event that has taken place in some last uh, chapter that daru was very highly very you can say severely beaten by the father of some boy shahzad who was given drugs by daru and so he was cut up and ultimately beating took place so it's a reminder of that not only the reminder of that beating but also the reminder that this is the condition in which daru or darashik was present how does he see at this word when he is present in his room and is visualizing the things which are happening with him and is contemplating on different type of uh, things which he possibly uh, might come across and or might have come across or is trying to let us know how he was so that is what we are going to read it so let's go down into the chapter and see what are the important details that we can have so here in the uh, first two three pages we don't have something important because it is just a repetition of different issues for example uh, here if we see we we uh, let me show you here if we see there's a captioned line that says uh, when i look in the mirror when i see what's been done to me rage lifts my eyelids and twists my reflection i cherish the anger center myself in it draw power from it strength for my healing because i will heal and then it shall be my turn at the crease and i won't be gentle with my bat you see that is the uh, resolve uh, which daru is having uh, in his mind that as soon as he gets okay he will be there to meet the people and beat them and he says that he will be beating them uh, with the bat which he is having with him and uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately he says that he will take full revenge uh, by beating them and i says that my, my bat is not going to be easy with them and this the type of thing he's thinking about that so his beating has not brought him to his senses has not brought him to something which which corrective measures may be taken but he's still going to take revenge from these people so he is a revengeful person and he wants to take revenge from those people though he's himself doing something wrong with the child but still he thinks that he uh, does not deserve this type of treatment so let's see more into it this is daru this is the type of person we have occasionally come across in this novel and a few lines here and there i just uh, show to my students that they are important lines and if they want to see them they can otherwise they don't deserve to be Uh, so much critically comment for the sake of examination and here again rich man's wish has been shown through these lines that's not also once again very much important uh, every woman maybe she is rich she she needs to 
talk these things about the man she would like to love or the way she would like to adopt in her life. For example, here Mumtaz is talking and saying perfect foresight, little courage and time machine. This is the kind of thing she would like to see in a man and she would like to see about herself as well. So that's not that important. Okay. And here comes the paragraph which possibly is uh, having some importance. Uh, the dialogue starts here. For me, yes, but which one of us is the problem? Uzi is a good father. He's sweet, he's generous, he's smart. I feel the muscles in my chest contract. He's rich. He's got everything he wants. He's perfect. She pulls back. Why are you so bitter? He's a bastard. So these are the lines which are really significant to consider. What does Daru see about Uzi, the best friend from the childhood, and now he's having relationship with the wife of that very best friend. But the wife is becoming gradually the matter of property, the matter of possession, that which one should be having possession of this woman. And when the same woman tries to say that Uzi, her husband, is really a very good person, he's smart, he's generous, he's sweet, and having a lot of things, this makes Daru itch and says that he's a bastard and so in that way he tries to show his anger why this woman is trying to show some love for that person. This is something which goes to show that Daru is thinking that Mumtaz is his property and uh, Uzi has got everything and then he's got a beautiful wife also and his wife is now showing her love for him as well and this is something which he cannot digest and uh, that's the way it goes to show that Daru is a person who feels insulted, who feels humiliated at the, at the the hands of the society or social setup of the rich class or that of the poor class, the middle class, but whatever the classes may be, he's feeling himself betrayed by the society. So that is why he's thinking like any young man that on the one hand you look a person has beautiful body, then has money, then has sweetness, then has the appreciation and a beautiful wife also, everything is with him and on the other hand Daru like gentlemen are there who don't have everything like that. So in this way this paragraph becomes the comment on uh, the general public uh, or the general people of our country who are deprived of young men especially who have gone jobless and are unable to secure a very good job for them. That is the way they would like to react and say, why me? Because everybody is having everything as Daru is saying, why me like that? So in that way, whatever the crack Daru could put on, uh, on Uzi, uh, his family, his richnesses, his wife or, or Muslim, the son, he is trying to do that, but still he thinks that he should have been also treated in the same way as the Uzi, uh, his friend has been dealt with. Uh, and so the anger of Daru against the society, in a way this is the anger from the writer as well that he's trying to show to us in this way. So the novel is really a comment on the society, comment of the youth, comment about the youth and comment about the corruption in society. So the, in these angles, these things should be taken in order to have a better grasp. And if you go further, We'll be able to find such things, more such things, which will clarify the view. The students can read the gaps, which, which I'm leaving. Uh, here, in this paragraph, let, let's read this paragraph. It is very fascinating. And I ask myself, what it is about me that makes this wonderful, beautiful woman return? Is it just because I'm pathetic, helpless in my current, uh, my current state, completely dependent on her? Or is it my sense of humor, my willingness to tease her, to joke my way into... Uh, the painful secret places. Do I help her understand herself? Do I make her happy? Do I do something for her that her husband and so son cannot do? Has she fallen in love with me? This is something uh, that I showed every young man maybe thinking that every rich woman would fall with him, fall in love with him. Even if she is talking to him, even if she is spending some time with him and the man would think, okay, she's fallen in love with him. We are finding that love has got a very different meaning in a very rich class as Uzi's wife from Taz is there. Uh, she is doing her duties and she will at some point say that she needs a man in order to have a company with. Uh, but Daru, when he thinks that she's coming again and again to him and she's visiting him and she's going into the markets and she is uh, spending time with him at that time, you think perhaps she's fallen in love with him because she's returning again and again. So this is the way of thinking of that young man who has got nothing with him and is thinking that a rich woman would fall in love with him. And that is the way uh, the most of the young people who don't belong to the rich class, they would like to take a woman. Love has a very different meaning as we will find with the passage of time. So Mumtaz uh, is not the person who would fall in love with anybody. 
she is the one who falls in love with herself and it's not daru with whom she has fallen in love with he, he is a past time and we shall see the role of daru it will be reversed that he will become the candle and umtaz will become the moth and then we shall also see that he would be acting as for example a prostitute let's go into the text and see where and how these things happen for example uh, after searching out the reason he's unable to find the reason and 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 uh, says that she uh, drawn to me just as i'm drawn to her she can't keep away she circles forced to keep her distance afraid of abandoning her husband and even more her son for too long but she keeps coming like a moth to my candle staying longer than she should leaving late for dinner and birthday parties sing singeing her wings she's risking her marriage for me her family her reputation and i the moth circling her candle realized that she's not just a candle she's moth as well circling me i look at her and see myself reflected my feelings my desires and she looking at me must see herself and which of us is moth and which is candle hardly seems to matter we are both the same so in this paragraph the writer uh, is is using the tongue of uh, daru in order to make us understand how do the roles change how do the attractions shift for example first of all if it is uh, daru then uh, daru becomes the candle and then it is mumtaz who is the moth and same case can reverse that mumtaz can become the candle and daru would be there so it's all matter of attraction it's all matter of want who wants whom and how much that person want for example if daru is in need of mumtaz definitely daru is the moth and mumtaz is going to be the candle and in the same way if if uh, mumtaz is in need of daru daru is the candle and mumtaz is coming to him as a moth but it's the opinion of daru that he is mostly the person who is candle and mumtaz is coming again and again and in this connection he begins thinking that perhaps there are certain things which his fam which are family for example the husband of mumtaz and son of mumtaz and uh, father in law of mumtaz and their money and their vast properties are unable to give him that thing which perhaps he can give now this is very strange that something daru must be possessing daru thinks that this is perhaps his pride this is perhaps his thinking that in that way maybe possibly satisfying himself that he is the need so this is our way of uh, cultivating needs suggesting needs inventing needs that we are needed by the people <laughs> nobody is needed by anybody so this is something which we have in our minds most of the time and this may be working sometime as well of course it works when you are young and at that time you find reasons of the relationship but here the paragraph is more important with respect to the moth and the candle so the roles may be reversing first if it is uh, this is daru is going to the moth because she, he was behind this woman and now this woman is coming to him and he thinks that he's become the candle so that depends how much one is candle and how much one is not so in that way the text is telling us about the changing of the roles one can become lover and then the same person can become the beloved as well so that is the kind of scene which we are having here about uh, daru and about muntaz and with the eye of daru we are looking at everyone and here is the muntaz look by him he proceeds further and uh, there's a rainy day in lahore it's a very beautiful description given as the uh, rains happen most of the time that has been talked about the birds how they chirp and how the things happen when the rain is there so daru also enjoys the same rain that is talked about in these passages uh, we will be going down to find out more about the the relationship which daru is looking at with with mumtaz for example i sit down next to her and shake my head i don't want any more of uzi's money thanks she kisses me uh, well once you have started having an affair with his wife taking his money doesn't seem like such a big step i rub the corner of her jaw with my chin feel my stubble scratch her skin turn it red i don't want to be having an affair with his wife she smiles tired of me so soon so that's the most powerful dialogue uh, most of the time when people go to usa they they would say that okay we would like to eat halal meat that's very significant about the muslims living in usa but then the same muslim will be having affair with the beautiful white woman without marrying her and now how she is halal same is the case here that daru is having the affair with mumtaz the wife of uzi but when mumtaz tries to give him some money at that time he says i don't need the money of the, the of, of uzi why should i have it this is wrong but then mumtaz is there to utter out the most powerful dialogue here he says that you are having the affair with his wife and what of the money so this is something 
which goes to reveal the natures of the people, the styles of the people, that they are ready to accept that thing, which is of their choice. That may be wrong, but they will accept that. But if something is not of their choice, they won't accept it, giving reasons for that, that we are not going to accept it. So same is the case with Daru. So in a way, Daru is just a common person, like anybody. He's not a special person. He's a common person and behaving like that, very common person as well, trying to take control of his pride, of his uh, psyche, and then uh, whatever he thinks about himself, he tries to preserve that. So this is what Daru is thinking about Muntaz, about his genius money as well. Going down and finding out more like that, for example, Muntaz is here speaking something very interesting. I love you. Stop saying that. I pull on her shirt again. Gently, do you think you can go back to Uzi? As though nothing ever happened, Daru, I don't have to go back to him. I'm married to him. I would have to leave him to go back to him. But you started this. He shakes my hand. So here is the moment when Muntaz has realized that she's doing something wrong. Not because of Uzi, not because of her father-in-law, but because of the son, Muazzam. He has uttered out certain sentences to her that, Mother, you don't love me. And there she is shaken and she wakes up. And so when she comes to meet Daru, she is clarifying him that she is not in love with him at all. She just wanted his company, which he has got. And possibly she may not be coming again and again to him. But Daru thinks that she is perhaps in love with him. And so he insists on the woman that she should accept that he, he she's in love with him but she categorically refuses that i'm not in love with you and even when uh, he touches the very softer side of uh, muntaz by saying that uh, you want to go back to your husband are you not attached with me muntaz utters out the most powerful sentence i have not to go back i'm married to him so there's no chance of not going back to him it's no it's not in to be invented it's already there so that is the kind of situation in which Daru finds himself when Mumtaz is not ready to accept that he is in love with him and he is there to impose this sentence, this kind of situation on her that she must accept that love matter is there. So in that way, the dialogue continues further and let's see how does it proceed uh, down the lane. Daru, I'm married. I have a son. I'm not looking to mate. I'm looking to be with a man for me because it makes me happy. So that is the sentence possibly this thing which I am going to color here, if you people are able to visualize, this colored line is very, very significant about the woman. Uh, Mumtaz that we are having critical study on. Mumtaz is the woman, she says that, I am not looking for the company of a man to mate with him, but only to be with a man who is for me because it makes me happy. So that's the company which she needs. That's the kind of friendship she needs. Sex is not important for her. And this is something she makes it open to Daru, that Daru should not think in these terms that she is far in love, she will be giving her husband, she will be marrying him. It's not going to happen at all. She says that I need happiness, and that happiness was present in meeting Daru, and that happiness she wanted to continue with, that's something she makes it clear. But Daru is thinking in other terms as well. He thinks that all these things will be topsy-turvy. Let's see how does it topsy-turvy. Okay, and then so going down with the same dialogue, with the same feeling that Muntaz is not ready to accept to be the beloved. And here, he uh, Daru says about himself, I am at once furious and ashamed. Furious because people give money after sex to prostitutes and ashamed because I'm so hungry that I have to take it, but I'll make a decision to hell with arrows. And here, uh, very surprisingly, irony of fate is here that Daru is, you know, being bought, Daru is being helped, Daru is being given money. And he thinks that it is just like the prostitutes, that prostitutes get money from their clients, and here he is getting money from his client. So love is now very complex. Right? Is it the love for the sake of money? Is it the love for the sake of body? Is it the love for the sake of acceptance and non-acceptance? Daru is broken hearted at this moment. That money is though coming to him, but love is not coming to him. And he is therefore thinking himself to be a prostitute. He's, he's selling himself to Muntaz in these terms. His ego perhaps is not allowing him and letting him to accept that, but he is doing the same thing which a prostitute does. Okay. So in that way, very interesting part of the story we are on and reading these things very clearly. 
the entire city is uneasy sometimes in monsoon so again talking about the rain so i am skipping these lines because every one of us knows very well what happens in our cities when rain is there most of the roads are blocked most of the bridges are blocked and so people are in difficulty but the shift takes place in this chapter because we have murad batsha once again the evil genius all the time ready to perform any kind of evil and here he is present once again and gives the plan to loot a boutique or plunder a boutique to to daru so that they can have a lot of money because he thinks that boutiques are full of the ladies and the uh, wares of the ladies and their the money could be abundantly available so that is why uh, he would give a plan to daru to loot it so according to that plan they proceed further and they want to have you know wear good clothes and have guns and they think that the decorations should appear very good etc this is just not important uh, the way they are going the decorations don't need to be decent at all but perhaps uh, the writer wants to give the impression that sometime it is happening that the decorations are not the common villagers who have become decorators but they are city dwellers and so in that way they continue so heroin sell selling of heroin the police people buying of the heroin all things are going on uh, the evil is being enhanced by mentioning these things that looting of the boutique selling of the heroin the drugs and so many other things these things are going on in this in this novel uh, so this is the paragraph perhaps that we should pay some little attention i'm getting good at math badminton I know play sitting down and try to be unpredictable so the moths will never know what it's safe. Sometimes they whir by my face or even land on me and I leave them alone at other times they fly at full velocity several feet away and I slam them with an extended forehand. So that is the paragraph which possibly cannot be taken uh, you know on surface level it may be taken on symbolic level on the surface level it's just an exercise with uh, with with the help of his racket daru is killing the moths which are coming to coming close to him coming in his area uh, but metaphorically speaking he if we say that mumtaz is his moth he is going to kill that very moth by, by becoming the candle so in that way he's practicing of killing and then when he goes to loot the plunder the boutique at that time the same killing of the moth may be possibly happening and that is why the writer has taken this paragraph in order to let us know that the things are there which are happening is making practice and symbolically speaking he is going to kill very moth that very moth which comes to him in order to roam around the candle which daru himself is going to be so that is the uh, you know end of the story that is going to happen this is the way the story will be possibly ending let's go further and see more things about that uh, perhaps we will be uh, enjoying even more uh, when we go down the paragraph because certain things which are very important uh, the intervening passages show that uh, daru has started to think that uh, this there is uh, someone who is responsible for the breakage which is going to happen between mumtaz and him is the son of mumtaz okay uh, but meanwhile uh, the writer takes some time in order to introduce us the father of uh, daru uh, it's not important to read all those pages about the father but this little bit of history that the father was there and he was in company with the uzi's father they were in army and they were you know some references to the women of kenet college has also been given and some relationship has been talked about about the cinema and how did he live there and after that how much he spent time with the, the uzi's father and uh, whatever things he has been doing in his life a little bit brief history has been given uh, i am not that interested in teaching this thing because it's not necessary to know about daru's father uh we know very well that there was a relationship between daru's father and uzi's father and uzi's father took a great care of the of the mother of daru and daru himself he brought him up gave him gifts and many other things so in that way it's not important to know it already so skipping it all together it's a very long passage and then here is another symbolic thing that the lizard is there in the room of daru and daru looks at the lizard he finds how the way lizard goes forward and she traps the kind of moth and eats it up so in that way not only the symbol of uh, uh, candle and moth is there but also the symbol of lizard catching you know the moths or the insects is there how does the lizard go very secretly close to that how does the lizard squeeze the the moth and put it in her mouth and eat it up so all these things he continues to look at he gives a detailed description of the lizard the writer gives the eyes of the lizard and then you know everything like that uh, daru daru is giving Uh, to us in a way writer is giving to us so the math again and again is to be killed so if if uh, if mumtaz is going to be math and coming close to candle 
that definitely is going to be killed in one way or the other. So killing thing is entering into the text and that is why we have this paragraph It says, suddenly I understand, I grab her arm, has he threatened you? I'm screaming, I shall kill him, I shall kill the bastard. So this is Daruna who wants to become a killer uh, of Uzi if he does not allow Mumtaz to come to her or if there is anything in the way of Mumtaz, he would like to kill that thing. Is it not an insanity into which Daru is entering? At that insanity which any lover would enter in order to gain the love of his beloved. Although the beloved is coming to him, but he thinks that 100% that beloved should come to him. She must not go away at all. She must all the time bestow her time and energy on him. And then ultimately he thinks, starts thinking and reaches the conclusion that it is Muazzam, the problem. The Muazzam is the son of Mumtaz and this is the very baby who has talked to the mother by saying that she does not love him and since that day she is thinking of becoming a good mother. And here is Daru who is thinking that Muazzam is the cause, Muazzam is the one because of him the relationship is, uh, uh, is not going smooth, it's changing it. And so he says that ultimately he should remove Muazzam from the way. And so uh, possibly when uh, he is there inside uh, the, the the looting program and enters into the boutique and there uh, he is drunk, uh, you know, he's having heroin as well, so he's out of his mind and uh, looks at the things which are here and there and before that he goes to the house of Muntaz as well, stands before the gate and then tries to shoot at Muslim as well while he is in the car going somewhere, but he does not succeed in shooting, but you can see the, the kind of intention with which he has gone in order to shoot Muslim. This much he is, you know, growing up, uh, having a problem with the, the, the psyche that he would like to kill the son of that very woman whom uh, he loves. Now, you know, this is something which possibly Muntaz would not digest and he will may, he may not get anything in the end, but still he would like to do so. This is the killing of the moth. This is the way he would kill the moth with his racket. This is the way how lizard would kill the moth. That is the way Daru would like to kill. So Murad Bacha brings him in a taxi towards, you know, the boutique and there they have the guns with them and with the help of those guns they want to loot and plunder the thing is going on inside the you know inside the boutique and you know the things are going on the students can read these paragraphs they give the descriptions of uh, the looting program but i advise everyone not to follow the same it is just this text it's just the fiction in which the things have been done so uh, money collection is going on but ultimately something wrong happens that a woman enters and that woman Daru thinks is Mumtaz and the son is with her that is Muazzam and that is why he goes forward he shoots the baby and then no more details are provided to us so the intention the visuality the externalization which were present in the mind of Daru they have materialized and he is in, in his in his vision thinking that perhaps he's going to kill that boy without knowing and in his mind something is at, at the back of his mind is that he needs to kill kill Muslims so that he may be able to have a, a restriction free or problem free relationship with Muntaz he, he needs to have that and so uh, he, he is in, in his in, in his uh, vision thinking that he's going to kill that boy and that is the enigmaticness of the text that is the complexity of the text that the writer does not clarify who actually that person is going to be uh, who is killed and shot at by Daru whether the person is killed 100% or it's whose baby nothing is provided for that but whatever the case may be uh, allegorically thinking this has been done that Muslim is killed and, and uh, or, or uh, some other baby is killed. Killing has taken place and Daru therefore is to go to the jail. And we already know that the text had started with this kind of thing. But in the court it is said that he is not because he killed a boy, but he is in the jail because Uzi killed the boy on the road and Daru took the blame on him and it's because of that. So Daru is in the jail not because of his crime, but because of the crime of that person whom he thinks to be a friend and then he uh, he is the lover of his very wife and uh, these are the things very complex you know and uh, so the book is book ends with that and we will be able to have the epilogue of the book and uh, in some next video hopefully uh, you people have enjoyed it and possibly if you you need to go through the text you, you must because it will provide you uh, further details about the things which I have mentioned to you so so far it's uh, uh, all from me the chapter has ended so hopefully seeing you about the last chapter of this book, inshallah, in the 
next coming up video so thank you very much for watching if you like it do not fail to hit the subscribe button thank you very much for watching